Welcome to this educational module. We would like to share some practical tips to help you move better. Today we're going to talk about everything you need to know to set up your walker. And generally what we're going to discuss is the considerations that you should look at when you're getting a two-wheeled walker. Then we're going to take a look at the height of the walker so that it fits you properly. Then we're going to look at the size of the walker and what the dimensions entail. Then we're going to take a look at the tips of the back legs of the walker. So the two-wheeled walker has the two wheels in the front, but the back legs don't have any wheel. So there's things we need to do to the back legs so they glide smoother on the surface. Then we're going to look at the front wheels and should they be on the inside or the outside or does it matter? And then there's different accessories that we can use for the two-wheeled walker so that it's functionally more adaptable to your needs. If you're considering getting a two-wheeled walker, think about where you're going to use it. Are you going to use it mostly outdoors or indoors? The two-wheeled walker is primarily used for indoors, and the reason being is it only has two wheels in the front, and the back legs can get caught on a lot of things, as well as the back legs can get worn down a lot easier because it's on concrete or a rougher surface. The nice thing with this walker is that it's the lightest of all the walkers. So it's the most portable. So what I mean is you can pick it up more easily and put it in your car whenever you're going somewhere. So that's a very nice feature. And lastly, this walker does not need hand brakes. I've seen many individuals who have had rollators, four-wheeled walkers with hand brakes, and it's very difficult for them to use the hand brakes for various reasons. So then the walker ends up getting away from them. So for those kind of people, a two-wheeled walker may actually work better because it doesn't require hand brakes and you can stay closer into it without having to think about it. You want to make sure that the walker is the right height for you. And the correct way of measuring for that is you measure from the wrist to the floor. So let's say this individual had 34 inches distance between their wrist to the floor. Then what you need to do is adjust the, the height of the walker to 34 inches. So the 34 inches is from the top of the hand grip directly down to the floor. Once you have that measurement, you wanna make sure that the walker, if possible, can adjust about an inch above or below whatever it is that you measure so that you can fine tune the height so it's comfortable for you. This is just an example of a proper fitting walker. On the left here, the elbow is bent between 15 to 20 degrees so your arm is comfortable. This picture shows that the walker is adjusted too high. The elbow is bent almost 90 degrees and that causes strain in the neck area as well as the wrist and elbow. These are the three different sizes that two-wheeled walkers come in. Think of it as small, medium, and large. So the junior walker is intended for shorter individuals. The standard walker is your medium size. It's the most common size walker. And the bariatric walker is for larger people. So the difference between the junior walker and the standard adult is really only the height adjustment. So the junior walker can adjust to shorter heights. The difference between the bariatric walker and the other walkers is simply the width. So it's 20 inches wide from handle to handle, whereas the other two walkers are 17 inches wide. It also adjusts high and low like the other walkers, and it can also accommodate a higher weight capacity than the other walkers. When adjusting the walker height, you wanna first push the button in and twist the tubing, and then slide it to the hole that you want it to go to, and then twist it back so the button can come back. If you don't twist it, what happens is you get caught on each hole. So I'm gonna show you some videos so you can see what I mean. and then that's without twisting it. And then with twisting it, you twist it, you pull it up so it doesn't get caught on the other holes, and then you wiggle it in. 
A lot of times people have come into therapy with their two-wheeled walker and their walker is making all sorts of racket when they're walking in. So what they're doing is they're walking with just the tips of their walker on the back legs, but they don't have any glides or anything to help them push it more easily. So this is, if your walker sounds like this, then you need to put glides or skis on the back of your legs. There's different types of glide caps and skis, so we're just going to briefly go over the different ones, not in any great detail. But the first one are the glide caps, and that's I see those often. And it's just a cap that fits over your the rubber tip of the walker. Then there's skis, and there's skis that fit over the tubing, or there's skis that fit inside the metal tubing of your walker. And then, so the above three are the most common that I've seen. I have also seen these walker glides that fit both in and outside of the tubing, uh, but they're not as common. I like the skis because they have thicker plastic at the bottom, so they're more durable. The caps have only a fraction of what the skis have, so they wear down a lot more easily, and then so you have to replace them more often. Now for people that have the glide caps, uh, here's just a little video on putting them on. So sometimes the caps fit nice and snug and they stay on real good. But if your rubber tips are already worn down, they'll be looser and they tend to fall off. So what you want to do if your cap is loose and keeps falling off, is use duct tape to help anchor it down. And what you do is you put, you just wrap it around. Make sure you don't hit the surface that's touching the floor. So I didn't do the best job with the duct tape, but you've got the idea. If it's if your glide caps are falling off, you just try some duct tape and that works very well. So now this is what your walker will sound like with the glide caps. So it's a huge difference. It glides a lot more easily. It's a lot more easy to maneuver. Now. Next, we're going to talk about removing the tip of the walker. So if you don't have glide caps, if you're not putting glide caps over the rubber tip, you need to remove the rubber tip in order to put those skis on. So this is just a really handy dandy way to remove the, the rubber tip easily. An easy way to remove the tip of the walker leg is to place the tip of the walker in between the door and the door frame, right about where the hinge is, because that's a very stable area. And then you sandwich the rubber tip until it grips between the door and the door frame. And then you wiggle the leg out of the tip, and that's it. So now that you've removed the rubber tip, now you're ready to add one of the skis. This ski is the ski that fits over the tubing. Once you have that ski in place, uh, you want to make sure it's lined up with the holes on your tubing. And then lastly, to make sure they're anchored well, uh, this is what you do. You just slam it down and put your weight through it to make sure they're all the way in. Now these are the skis that go inside the tubing. This is another ski that actually this part fits inside of the walker pole and it's a universal fit and the way it works is there is a screw mechanism at the bottom of the ski and when you tighten that screw it expands the outside here so that it's a nice snug fit. So I'm just going to show you how that expands.
So you see how much wider that is, and that's what's going on inside of your walker pole so it doesn't twist around. And then the next video just shows how to attach it. When you attach this walker ski, you slip it inside the pole. You make sure that the, the ski part, the front part of it, is in line with the holes. And then what you do is you tighten up that screw. And then you twist it just so that it makes sure it's lined up. And then you tighten it up a little bit more. And then you just check it to make sure it's not going to twist. This is a video of with the skis installed and what it sounds like. Now some people are concerned about the skis uh, scratching their wooden floor. So there are socks that you can add to your skis. They sell them online. And this is what it sounds like with the socks installed. And they simply fit over the walker skis. With, they're like elastic, so they stay on. The next question is, should the wheels be on the inside or the outside of the walker? Well, if you don't have any problems with them being on the outside, you're not running into things, then don't worry about it. But let's say you're in a space where the doorway's a little bit more narrow, so that's typically in older homes, or you've got a little more furniture that you need to maneuver around and you keep bumping into it, then maybe you should have the wheels on the inside of the walker. But here you can see the wheels on this one. This is on the outside. And if you're going through a narrow doorway, you can see how that wheel would run into there. So this is what it looks like with the wheels on the inside of the walker. And coming through the doorway, now the wheel's on the inside and you can clear through the doorway more easily. Simply by changing the wheels to the inside of the walker can make a difference of about three inches in width, which is very valuable if you're maneuvering narrow spaces. Changing the wheels on the walker really isn't too difficult, and this is a video that shows you how to do it. So you just turn the walker upside down, and then you push in this button, you twist a little bit, and then you just slip this up, and then same with the other side, you twist it and bring it up. Now you're going to put the one on this side over here. And then you're going to do the same on this side. are on the inside. And that's it. That wasn't too bad, was it? Now we're going to take a brief look at walker trays, in particularly this one. This is my favorite one because it doesn't fill the whole inside of the walker like other trays do. You still have some distance inside the walker that you can walk into. Also, you can just flip it down when you're not using it and then you can pull it back up when you need it. It's real handy to have when you're uh, maneuvering around in the kitchen, you're getting things out of the refrigerator, you can put it on the tray and then bring it to the counter. And then once you've made, made your meal or what have you, you can put it on there and bring it to your table. So it's a real handy device to have. And this video just shows how to install it. So when you mount this, you want the cup holders to be at the bottom. And then you're going to squeeze this onto the pole. And that's all there is to mounting it. Then when you need it, you pull it up. You use it as a tray. Works really well in the kitchen. And then when you're done, you put it back down so that when you need to walk, you can always walk inside the walker. But when you're using it, it's going to take up some space. 
but that's just temporary for as long as you need it. And then when you're done, you push it down. Now what I found is very important. Uh, these trays aren't universal fit. So when you're looking for this flip up kind of tray, make sure that the company that made your walker also is the company that made the tray. Like uh, Guardian was the original uh, ones that made this. So all Guardian walkers could take this Guardian tray. Now I think Drive took over Guardian, so you'll see uh, Guardian uh, Drive Guardian flip-up trays, and those would fit those walkers. Also Nova has their own walkers, and they have their own trays. So just make sure you get the right tray for the right walker. Uh, and then also um, I found that I tried attaching these to junior walkers, and for some reason, it just doesn't fit junior walkers, so that's the downside to it. And then the last accessory are walker bags. Now, if you have a tray on the front of your walker, you can't use this kind of bag, but if you have another kind of tray that just fits over the handles, then you could use this kind of bag. Uh, and then there's the side pouches that you can get. Just remember, if you put something bulky like a, a drink on the side, that's going to increase the width of your walker. And if you're going through narrow spaces, that's going to catch. So just something to keep in mind. So in summary, just make sure that your walker fits you, both in height and in width. If you're using a two-wheeled walker, you're going to need to do something with the back legs, either putting some sort of glide or ski on them so it moves more easily. The front wheels can be easily moved from the outside to the inside if you have to maneuver through narrow spaces and those outside wheels tend to catch a lot. A walker tray can help with transporting food for meal prep and to bring this prepared food to the table. And then walker bags can help with transport frequently used items. There are side mounts available and front mounts. Thank you.